Jesus Christ died the death you were worthy of. They which do such things are worthy of. Jesus Christ came into the world and died the death you were worthy of. Why? That he might quicken you with life by righteousness you didn't have. Let me give it to you again. He died the death you deserved so that he could quicken you with life by righteousness you didn't have. Why? To exalt you to a position you were not worthy of. But you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna skip the quickening. God did not create those things in the heavenly places for dead sinners. He created them for those who've been quickened by the Son of God. He created them for the redeemed. He prepared them for them that love Him. Those that are the called according to His purpose. Not for those walking according to the course of this world whose conversation is in the lust of the flesh and of the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Before God, before God said, I'm going to raise you up and sit you in heavenly places, I'm going to quicken you with my son. He died the death you deserved to quicken you with life by righteousness that you didn't have so that he could exalt you and give you a position you were not worthy of. Let's look at it talking about this kindness. Let's look at it in Titus 2.3. For we ourselves, you know what Paul's saying here? He's saying you people need to learn not to speak evil of any man, to not be covetous, brawlers, for ourselves also were sometimes foolish. You know, I get questions from people all the time. I, I got I to gotta guard my heart at all times, guys. In the ministry, you get questions from people that you're just like, really? And then I have to remember, look how stupid you were in your 20s. You know, we get up and we jump on the people, oh, water baptism, water baptism. I was baptized in water twice. Why? Because I was sometimes foolish. I had to learn my Bible. How many? How many? Three? Three baptisms? You might need a fourth one, brother. We're going to... The way that back is, the way that back is, we was talking about filling that baptismal up with water and seeing if the angel will come down and stir it and let, raise you up and lower you in it. <laughs> uh, you yourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's what we were sometimes. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. It wasn't your righteousness that gave you life. Who did the works of righteousness? It was Jesus Christ. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration. See, people who see this word saved and they just they miss everything else in the context. God saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is what? renewed day by day by day. You know what that means? God is in the process of saving you every time you pick up that book. Renewing and building you up day by day. This washing of regeneration here has to do with making you a new creation in Jesus Christ. That was the first step. Regeneration. His workmanship created in what? Christ. And once we get that regeneration, He renews us by the Holy Ghost. Now notice this which he shed on us abundantly. What do you do with passages like that? And why ain't it working in our lives? Why, why is the vast majority of Christians still summarized as foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts? Why is that the summary of Christians? Instead of this great salvation by regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly. You have abundance of regeneration and renewing of God through Jesus Christ our Savior. That being justified by what? We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I was sitting there, man, I, I, me and Eric was talking last night about Abraham, the life of Abraham. You know, when Abraham offered Isaac, what James says is that the scripture was fulfilled. When Abraham offered Isaac, it was fulfilling Genesis 15. They go hand in hand. You know what faith, you know what works Connected with faith is because the, the ultimate goal of this work of faith of God is bringing us unto good works. And you know what, what, what the connection is between works and faith? 
God knew the moment that Abraham believed in Genesis 15 that he was a righteous man. But nobody else could see it. Not another single person could see it. God already knew. This is a righteous man. All right, Abraham, because you've believed, now whispers a little more in his ear. And Abraham, his whole life, his steps are being guided by the word of God. And in Genesis 22, the Bible says the Lord tempted Abraham. He said, all right, Abraham, I'm going to prove you. Go offer Isaac. Abraham didn't bat an eye. He didn't bat an eye. That faith of God had been working in him all the way up to that point. You know what God is actually doing there? You know what he's actually doing when he tells Abraham to do that? He is showing something. He is showing the work of his word working effectually in that man over a lifetime. He is putting on display what only God could see before. This is a righteous man because he believes me. And then he put it on display. You understand where I'm going with this? What God wants to show in you, man, what God, you listen, you say, why am I, why do I have this body? What's this body for? It is for God to manifest the life of his son in our mortal flesh. And you see that, see that, that we being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That word justified, people hear the word justified and they only, one context, one context only. There's multiple ways of justification. You can be justified in what you say. It's going to rain tomorrow. I don't believe you. It rains tomorrow. I was justified in my saying. Remember what Paul said, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, what? Justified in the spirit. Seen of who? You know what God is showing the angels? This work of faith. And we've been called to believe the word of God and then walk in in obedience to that through the life of Christ because God is showing something to the angels that has to do with our justification and His in His judgment. Now, I don't understand all that stuff completely, but I'm telling you, there's a purpose in what, what's going on. And I'll give me just a few moments here. So when Paul says, for by grace are you saved, it's going back to this passage. And he says, for... Get this now, salvation by what? Through what? So how are we saved? We are saved by grace through faith. The salvation of God is wrought by His grace through faith. Meaning a life spent outside of the Bible is a neglecting of God's salvation. There's a problem. It's not you, it's Christ. And the only way to receive that is by grace through faith. Right? I just can't live it. I can't live it. I can't live it. It's not you, it's Christ in you. Salvation is by grace through faith. Paul says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch what he says. And listen, and by whom also, by whom also, in addition to peace with God, we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. A man that's believed the gospel and now being justified has peace with God. That man that's at peace with God also has access into something. He has access into grace by faith. And how you, how you access that life is completely up to you. Completely up to you. You can be at peace with God and spend the rest of your life deciding I'm not going to access God's grace. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Listen, this faith, listen, it's it's... That not of yourselves. What does he mean, that not of yourselves? This faith. The faith that saves you is not even a faith of your own. It is the gift of God. Meaning you don't just go around going, well, just I just, I just believe in the way I see it, and that might work for you. And if I just believe and I just believe, faith is a gift of God. The faith by which he saves you by his grace is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Paul said, so then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? So how does hearing come? By the word of God. And what comes by hearing the word of God? Faith. And so that book right there is a gift of God. With that, people's just like, oh, that's Calvinism. What would you know and believe about God without this Bible? That is a gift of God right there. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And through hearing that book, God is giving us the faith by which his grace saves us. 
not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship. This salvation and this creation of this new man is the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus what? That is the end of this work of grace through faith. Is creating us unto which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, we are laborers together with God in this work. And I'm, I'm going to close here. Y'all go give me one second to kind of get into this just for one second. We have all been baptized by one spirit into one body, haven't we? Now ye are the body of Christ. This whole church is the body of Christ. There's other churches, part of this body. But this local assembly right here, ye are the body of Christ. That is our identity. Not my identity. Not Bill's identity. That is our identity. I don't sit up here and say, yeah, that's not of the body and that's not of the body. No, I look at all these members and I say, this is my body. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Particular member, particular member, particular member, particular member. Gary ain't me and I ain't Gary and Bill ain't me and Les ain't me and, and none, of us, none of us are the same, Right? And every one of us, every one of us have been made a specific particular member in the body of Christ. But corporately, we are the body. And every one of us, as Paul says in, in Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12, if I can find it. For as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another.